Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Monday, October 10th, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. We just had an M2.4 solar flare, and the sun is getting active after an earlier M flare just about 18 hours ago. This flare has no CME component. We'll get to that in greater detail. As we also have footage, amazing footage of Stromboli Volcano and a pyroclastic flow that made it to the ocean. But the big story in Maine, it's insane. It's winter. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, this is a beautiful shot someone sent, a, sent us in, um, I guess from their backyard in Maine, where you can see the clashing of the seasons meeting right here, fall and winter. And we do have some interesting statistics here from Chicago. The 1885-2001 long-term probability of the first flakes. Let's get into it. Let's get ready to shovel! <laughs> now here's an interesting stat I found here in the Chicago data set. Uh, the earliest first measurable snow just happened at the peak of global warming, October 12th, 2006. Can you believe that? Well, let's check out some of these models. They're looking insane. Look at the snow coverage through the third week of October. Pretty fantastic. If this is actually the way it's going to line up, it's going to be a season of pleasing for skiers. Look at the totals here in Colorado. Now, we do have a few systems here that will be moving through next week, Monday, Tuesday, the 17th and the 18th. It could bring some heavy snow here to the Rockies all the way down to New Mexico. So that's what we'll be watching. At the same time, we have a potential for some snow hitting those New England ski resorts up in New Hampshire, Maine, northern New York the DAX there, as well as Maine. And then this model run, wow, showing lots of snow in the beginning of winter there, third week of October. But the snow is going to continue up in Canada. We have Eastern Canada receiving snow this week, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then more snow picks up here on Thursday and Friday for Ontario and Quebec. So those are the models. And we're sticking with it. Heavy rain possible in the Southwest. Locally, heavy and excessive rainfall is possible today across southwestern U.S. West Texas, and they need it. That is the nexus of the Schmexus down there. And it, we could see rain from southwestern U.S., from southern California to west Texas. Meanwhile, a very cold front may trigger strong to severe thunderstorms Tuesday and Wednesday in portions of the Plains and Mississippi Valley into the Ohio and Tennessee Valleys. So let's take a look at that on the models. And so we're at the GFS map here, and you can see those storms Brewing up there in West Texas, that's going to be ongoing for a little bit. And then that system's going to move out into the plains here and bring some rain. And then there's that cold front Wednesday, moving everything east and bringing that snow up here into central Canada. So those are the models. And now we're over at Cap Allon's page, electroverse.co, to look at a novel look at global hurricane data, which reveals, by the way, no trend. Now, experienced data analyst, 10-year Wall Street veteran, and self-proclaimed Miss Smarty Pants Zoe Finn of phzoe.com takes a look at the alarmist claim that increasing CO2 emissions are leading to more frequent and intense hurricanes. And not only did she just look at hurricanes, she broke them down in categories from Cat 1 to Cat 5. And what she found was, no, of course it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. Such a thing would be misleading. But that's exactly what the mainstream media has been doing, misleading the public. Here is the statistics for Cat 1 storms since 1950, and there is a decreasing trend since the mid-90s. The same thing with Cat 2 storms, a decreasing trend since the mid-90s. Cat 3 storms, decreasing trend since the 90s. And Cat 4 storms, decreasing trend since the mid-90s. Here's Cat 5. There is an overall decreasing trend since the 1950s. And if we look at overall, all hurricanes in all categories, there is no trend. Just natural cyclic motions, natural climate variability. And in this case, natural variability of the amount and severity of hurricanes. But for the most part, every category of hurricane in North America has been dropping off since the 90s. Those are the facts. Here's some more facts. Snow-free Scotland. No snow in the country for the fourth time in six years. Well, it's going to snow starting this weekend. Friday, Saturday. Looks like Scotland is going to be picking up the global warming goodness. 
bomb, severe weather outlook signals, a summer of cyclones and floods. That's not good news. Sydney has already broken the all-time rainfall record ever and still has several months to go to add to the totals, which will be historic. The bomb severe weather outlook for Australia warns of increased risk of tropical cyclones, tropical lows, and widespread flooding for eastern and northern Australia. So heads up. So let's come over and look at the seismic outlook. And there are no quakes of note. An interesting rumbler happened in Tennessee yesterday. We also had a larger rumbler on the Mid-Ocean Ridge here. And the seismic swarm is continuing on the Reckianus Ridge here. Let's take a look at seven days all magnitude. And then 30 days all magnitude. Now, it is our supposition that this seismic swarm out here on the Mid-Ocean Ridge is indicative of a deep, three to four kilometer deep, subsurface eruption happening on the mid-ocean ridge and may be signaling a shift in our planet earth so we're going to keep a close eye on what's going on here in the mid-ocean ridges as we know you are very busy people now worldwide volcano news update we've got stromboli popo reventador mayon sangay katamai sakota jima nevados de chilon and we have some video footage of this amazing pyroclastic flow at stromboli here we can see nishun shima Puffing and passing, lots of steam and ash there coming from that volcano, picking it up from satellite. Now Stromboli volcano pyroclastic flows continue, and the lava front remains on Sierra del Fuco. The intense activity in the volcano has been continuing at the time of this update and is still considered to be very high. Periods of pyroclastic flows continue to slide down along the Sierra del Fuco from where they directly flow into the sea. And let's take a look. A volcano on Italy's Stromboli Island has erupted, releasing huge plumes of smoke and a lava flow reaching the sea. Look at that. The volcano is one of the most active in the world, continuously erupting over the past 90 years. The eruptive phase caused the partial collapse of the crater terrace and the lava flow produced a three minute seismic signal. No casualties or damage was reported on the island, which has a population of just 400 residents beautiful beautiful footage no one at risk there uh just the photographers going wild now some space weather news we had a m1 flare 19 hours ago and the underachieving sunspot ar 3112 that giant spot we've been watching for days finally produced an m flare but there is no cma component the plasma went out and got sucked right back in here and so there is no eruptive danger. But we did just have an M2.4 kickoff. And we're going to be waiting to see if that's that same 3112 active region and if there is any coronal mass ejection associated with it. So potentially coming from active region 3112, an M2.4 just kicked off the sun. There is a, a mild radio blackout, but there is little information. We were in geomagnetic instability for a full 24 hours hours of powers and this is because of this instability coming from uh, the coronal hole stream from our sun there was two small southern coronal holes they coupled for a solid day driving up plasma speed all the way up to about 620 but everything is dropping off into quiet now so we're going to stay tuned for some updates on the m 2.4 later on here let's take a look at the latest solar cycle comparisons and you can see the current cycle 25 we're in is about the same intensity as cycle 24 it is in fact much less than any of the last three cycles so anyone claiming that cycle 25 is the strongest cycle in history or any of this other nonsense you hear is complete lunacy in fact it's showing a weakening as we enter solar max so very interesting to see how this cycle progression continues but cycle 25 is lining up to be just as weak as 24, keeping us in that grand solar minimum pattern. Because remember, cycle 24 is the weakest cycle in over 100 years. So this could be the second weakest. And then the cycle after that could be a dud. And that's when it's boom time. Now, did you know an 11th century polymath was the first to recognize past climate change? I didn't. And it's a pretty fantastic story. It was a woman, Shen Qiu, who deduced that the climate in northern China had been different in the ancient past because she discovered fossilized bamboo in a cave. 
in a region where bamboo didn't grow. Very fantastic story. We may cover it over at Magnetic Reversal News. And so if you're interested, the links to everything we talk about will be below. China aims to unravel the sun's secrets. Beijing has deployed a solar exploring telescope that will help forecast space weather. Hmm. I wonder what China knows. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Thank you to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. Your support allows us to make all of these videos and the heroes that share the videos. We love you. Be safe.